All right, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahaha Kodash. Double honors to my elder apostles and my elders. A great millstone, GMS, peace and blessings unto the elect. This is the brother Atazaria from GMS Houston. All right, and today, as a matter of fact, let me do this right here. We're going to get the word uh, covet, okay? Because most people think when you say something about being covetous that it's um, a wicked act. Well, it just depends on what you're coveting after, all right? Um, so we'll get the definition for the word covet, okay? It says to desire or wish for inordinately, inordinately or without regard for the rights of others, okay? Covet, desire, lust after, all right? Probably, ultimately, from the Latin, all right? Uh, passionate desire, all right? Eagerness, ambition, okay? To long for, desire, all right? Uh, in a good sense, from the mid 14th century, in a good sense, desire or wish for eagerly, all right? Desire to obtain or possess, all right? So the desire to obtain or possess. Now let's go back to the uh, scriptures, all right? And I just put covet, all right? All right. Um, now... You see right here, like in Psalms 10 and 3. Now, see, this is where balance comes in, okay? Because there's certain things you should covet, and there's things that you should not covet, okay? Um, let's get click on Psalms 10. Let's go up. Uh, this is Psalms 10 and 1. It says, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have been, they have imagined. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire and blessed the covetous, all right, whom the Lord aborted, aborted, all right, or hated, you know. So you, you look at this and be like, wait, the Lord hates a covetous man, okay. But in the scripture, it's talking about the wicked, okay. Whom the Lord aborted. He aborts. Uh, he hates uh, the wicked. Okay. And verse 3 again. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire. Who are the wicked? Esau, Edom. Okay. What's his desire? Death. Okay. Hell. All right. Uh, and blessed the covetous. Whom the soul. This is speaking about. His desire, his covetedness is to, he covets other men's goods and takes them, okay, by force, all right? Thus says the scripture, okay? But let's go back. Psalms 119 and 36. Incline my heart or my mind unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness, all right? So now you're again, you like, oh, well, see? Supposed to be coveting, all right? Like the scripture says in the what is known as the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife or his goods, you know? And of course not, all right? That's wicked, but that's what the devil does, okay? Now, I want to drop down because we see many scriptures that speak against being covetous, all right? Um, You see, like all these, Yep, all, all through Habakkuk, okay, that second chapter, okay, um, hey, I might have to come back and do a lesson on 12 and 15 in Luke, uh, but I'm going to drop down, okay, let's, matter of fact, let me see something. Now, again, like in the book of Romans, the first chapter, as a matter of fact, let me get it in my scriptures. 
when you go through this chapter, okay, starting at about, I think like the 21st verse. Mm-hmm. It speaks about different uh, types of wickedness, all right? And when you get to the 29th verse, it says, being filled with all unrighteousness, all right, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, all right? And, um, you know, it goes on into other things, but again, we see the word covetousness, all right? <clears throat> all right. But let's keep going, all right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 10, yet not altogether with f with the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters, for they must must ye needs go out of the world. All right. But let's keep going. OK, because here it says uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous, you see, the thing is, you got to realize what it is that you're coveting after. OK, what do you earnestly desire after? What are you eager to have or eager to do? OK, or an idolater or a railer, a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one know not to eat. All right. Again, 1 Corinthians 6 and 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the heavenly father. Okay, well, the coveted, co people that are covetous or, or covet to things, well, they're not going to make it to the kingdom. Again, it depends on what it is that you're desiring or what you're coveting after. All right, so let's keep going. All right, now, this is the other side of it. What should you covet to? Okay. Matter of fact, let me get this also in my scripture, Salakia, 1 Corinthians 12 and uh, 31. Let me get it. All right. Um, let me see something. Now, when you go into this chapter, as a matter of fact, let me read the heading. It says, spiritual gifts are diverse, etc. All right. So what spiritual gifts, okay, should, uh, matter of fact, let me read this, 1 Corinthians 12 and 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts, all right, covet earnestly the best gifts, all right, and there's a precept here, let me see what it says, oh, that's on point, okay, uh, let me, let me read it, um, uh, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. All right. Now let's jump to the next uh, chapter. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. And I'll read the heading also. It says, Prophecy commended. All right. 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. All right. As a matter of fact, let me go up and make a point. Because charity is a very important thing. All right. And uh, the heading of uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and 1, it says, All gifts, however excellent, are nothing without charity. So without charity, it don't matter what you can do. We've seen guys that could prophesy left and right, brought, broke scriptures down left and right, but they was using brothers. They knew all, they, they knew them, but they didn't, really didn't understand. Either that, well, they didn't understand. They had no fear of the Lord to be using brothers, okay? Um. So without charity, you have nothing, okay? Again, all gifts, however excellent, are nothing without charity, all right? And when you go to the, through the 13th chapter, all right, it speaks about how important charity is. All right, which you know, I just want to make that point, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but let me get uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. Uh, it says, Follow after charity 
and desire spiritual gifts, okay? But rather that ye may prophesy, okay? But rather that ye may prophesy, okay? So let's go to 14 and 39. Flip over, all right? This is a... Uh, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 14 and 39, it says, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak in tongues. Now, of course, the, the, the precept that they have in here was 12 and 31, which we just uh, read. That's the best gifts, man. All right. Earnestly covet. All right. The best gifts. Prophecy. And we're in the time of prophecy. All right. So we should covet to prophesy. To, we should ask the Heavenly Father to give us more understanding of these prophecies that we may go out and speak into the ears of our people as commanded. All right. Matter of fact, let me get a scripture and I'll probably end it here. All right. Because uh, this book is a book of prophecies. Okay. You know, we go into second, first, second Ezra constantly all throughout the Apocrypha. Okay. Prophecies. All right. We're out. All through the scriptures, okay. But uh, a lot of these so-called Christians, they don't like the apocrypha. All right. Matter of fact, let me say this: the elites took this book out on purpose, man. Okay, because it's the the missing piece to the puzzle. All right, and it has more proof who we are, what the prophecies say. Okay, and that's what they didn't want. All right, that's why a lot of these so-called Christians shun it. Be all oh, in part of the Bible, you know. But let me get a second Ezra. All right, um, fifteen. All right, this is second Ezra fifteen and one. It says, "Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy." which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. So we should ask the Heavenly Father to give us more understanding of these prophecies so that we may do what is commandment, commanded, which is what? Go out and speak the prophecies, man. Okay? Um, verse 2 says, And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. You see? And as you go, matter of fact, I'll keep going. It says, fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity or the unbelief of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Okay? Because they have no belief in this. It says, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. They don't believe in the prophecies. Okay? Verse 5, it says, behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. And we're seeing that. Okay? And that's what our people didn't want. The majority of, of Israel didn't, they don't want these plagues. They want things to go on so they continue on. They want things to get better on this side. But we're looking for the prophecies to come to pass so that this place may be taken out. The prophecy says that we're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven and be in complete rulership, in, right, in complete righteousness. That's something to, you know, that. That, that prophecy alone, okay, that's a glorious thing, okay, which the majority of our people don't want. They don't want these prophecies to come true, okay, but don't let that uh, deter you, for the Heavenly Father said that the unfaithful should die in their unfaithfulness, okay, verse 5, second, uh, Ezra uh, 15 and 5. Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Okay? So, we're seeing these things, because these are the things that were prophesied, and they are faithful and true. So, we should covet to prophesy. All right? We should ask, again, ask the Most High, give me more understanding on these prophecies. So that you will have that understanding and that you may go out and spread the gospel. Okay? Because as the scriptures say, through the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. These prophecies, some are very fearful. Plagues, death and destruction and famine. 
That's, that's fearful. That's something to be scared about. And so that we should fear the Lord, get our act together, you know, repent, get our act together, and get on the good foot. Get on that straight path, man, okay, by knowing these prophecies, all right? Um, that's pretty much it, man. So there's nothing, not only is there nothing wrong with prophes, pro, uh, coveting to prophesy, but we should, we should covet to prophesy, okay? Um, and that's it again, 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak in tongues. All right. I'll hit the button right back. Okay. So with that, I'm going to end it right there. And all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Shemiah Washah. It's on to the next one. Until then, I say Shalom.